Okay, hi. So today we're going to talk about something which is known as nanoscience. Now, in case you haven't already guessed, nanoscience literally means the science of extremely small things. If you've ever owned an iPod Nano, it might be a bit past your time, but the first iPod I ever owned was the iPod Nano. And the selling point for that is that it was way smaller than the classic iPod. Now, that's because Nano actually means very small. So Nano anything means very small. But we can be more specific than that. If I have a nanometer, one nanometer, that is equal to one times 10 to the power of minus nine meters in standard form. Now, if you're not familiar with standard form, then that is exactly the same as 0 0.0000 zero 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 one meters so very 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 small that would be exactly the same as if we had a nanogram or a nanoliter it literally means one thousand millionth of that measurement so a nanometer is one thousand millionth of a meter which is actually quite startling now what's important is that if we take um, a very small amount of a substance and we're talking here in the atomic range so we're talking around about uh, hundreds of atoms remember we said that we are made of trillions and trillions of atoms so this is actually extremely small so hundreds of atoms down to even single atoms that is what we're talking about when we're speaking about nanoscience down at this level the properties of substances will drastically change. Property of the substances will change, they will drastically change. The reason being that uh, if we have something very small, like a few atoms, the surface area in comparison to the volume is huge in comparison to if we take, let's say, a few grams of sugar or something like that, a few grams of salt. If we take a few atoms or a few molecules, the surface area will be phenomenally big in comparison to the volume. And so we can say the reason is very high surface area, very high surface area. And that is, of course, in comparison to volume. So compared to the volume. And so what we're going to do now is take a look at a few examples of substances that we have been able to use on the nanoscale. Okay, now one big example is titanium oxide. Titanium oxide. Now titanium oxide is a major component of cosmetics and importantly sun cream or sunscreen and the reason it's used in sunscreen is because it is very good at absorbing UV or ultraviolet radiation and that's what causes sunburn now our traditional sun creams which don't contain nanoparticles of titanium oxide are way less efficient so we need to use more of them to achieve the same results so it's very good in this sense now it also has another use and that is on windows if windows are coated with nanoparticles of titanium oxide then they are able to break down dirt so they're able to break down dirt. And this is a result of sunlight exposure. Of sunlight exposure. When they detect sunlight, they actually chemically react with the dirt and they'll break it down. And then of course, when it rains um, or you wash the windows, then the dirt will just wash off and it won't uh, stain the window or cause any other sort of visual pollution. And so this example I do want you to remember, and that is titanium oxide. Now, another example I'd like you to remember is that we can form things which are known as nano cages. 
nano cages. And you can literally think of these as tiny little cages that we can package things in in order to protect them. And what we do is we package drugs, so not recreational drugs or anything like that, pharmaceutical drugs or medicines into these nano cages and then they are delivered to where we want them to go. Delivered to site. One major example of this is gold. So gold nanoparticles have a role in affecting cancer cells. Cancer cells. So in a tumour, uh, you have blood vessels which supply the tumour with blood and allow it to grow. These blood vessels are normally leaky and they've got holes in them and the, these gold nanoparticles will fit through the holes and therefore we can deliver drugs in order to combat the tumours. And the reason why this is so clever is because a healthy blood vessel will not have holes in it big enough to fit those gold nanoparticles through. And so we are really targeting the cancer cells and not the healthy cells. And so that is nano cages. Another thing which is sort of a, a, a double whammy if you like, the gold, if we fire a laser at the gold, the gold nanoparticles will heat up and this will cause the cancer cells to be directly affected as well because they're the only ones which are going to have the gold in them. And so they will heat up, damage the cells, but it won't damage the surrounding healthy cells because they don't have these gold particles in them. And so that is a sort of double-edged sword there if you like uh, and it's a great avenue for future research. And in the future, we are looking at using nanoscience for loads of different things. We could stay here and talk for hours and hours about it. But one of the main ones, which is really interesting, is the use of nanowires. Nanowires are literally, as it sounds, they are tiny, tiny wires which will allow the flow of electricity. And this could lead to very small computers or it could just be a regular size computer which could lead to huge amounts of memory and speed huge amounts of memory and huge speeds could be achieved by using nano wires because we'd just be able to fit more into our CPUs and so this is something which is very interesting for the future as well, but it hasn't yet been perfected. And lastly, I'm going to do this arrow in a different color. Green, I know the colors haven't really worked out, but the green here is representing a negative. Lastly, we don't know many of the consequences of using nanotechnology. So consequences. Many nanoparticles can be released into the environment. So, into environment. For example, if nanotechnology found its way into a river or, or into soil, will this damage the ecosystem? Will it damage the plants that are growing in the soil? Well, who knows? But um, the likelihood is that it's going to have some effect and also nanoparticles are thought to be very flammable as well not all of them of course but if a substance is flammable then the massive surface area will cause a well could potentially cause a large explosion rather than just a small spark so we could say a spark could lead to a large explosion. And so that is another danger. So it's dangerous in that sense. Okay, I'm going to stop there. There are loads more potential uses for nanoparticles and nanoscience. Um, we've only really glossed the surface here, but I wanted to give you an idea exactly what nanoscience is what it's being used for and potentially the risks of it. So feel free to research more into it because it is a very interesting topic. If you do have any questions for me, 
do feel free to follow the link below and send me an email directly or write a comment in the comment box and I'll be sure to get back to you. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.